So let's start with the easy one first. So let's select the geometry that we want to um, make a toolpath for. And once we've selected that, you can see that these different functions are now active. Now, the main, uh, I guess, the simple cutting uh, function is this one here, which is a blue square um, with sort of red arrows around the outside. And if you hover over it, you can see routing offset um, appearing. Now, when we click that, it opens up this main dialog box um, where all of the settings um, of that tool are, um, I guess, calibrated. Now, the first thing we have to do is to select a tool. And as we'd be aware, it's um, important that we select a tool uh, that is actually in the tool changer. Um, and having checked um, the tool, um, the chart uh, for the tool carousel behind the CNC machine, I know that there is an 8mm rougher loaded up. And there it is. I'm going to double click on that. And that's loaded up the 8mm rougher um, into our routine here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to edit the parameters. So if we click on this little box in Edit, it opens up the Cut Definition dialog window. Now this is where we have to pay attention because this is pretty much where we do all the settings. So let's just expand each of these different parameters. We won't necessarily use each of these, but we'll go through them sequentially. Now the really important one is this one here, the depths. Now, what we're interested in is the final depth. Now remember, we're using a 17mm uh, plywood, um, but we want to go through a little bit extra. So we're going to cut in a little bit to the sacrificial sheet. That's OK. It's a sacrificial sheet that's underneath. But that will mean that we've cut all the way through uh, the material, so we've got a, a clean cut. So I'm going to input the value 173 millimeters. So it's going to go through an extra 0.3 of a millimetre. Now, we move on to the next um, parameter, which is the number of passes that the tool will do um, to cut through this geometry. Now, remembering our rule of thumb, um, that we can cut into the material such as plywood approximately the depth equal to the diameter of the tool. So because we're using an 8mm tool and we're cutting through 17mm, we can go through, um, in this case, say two times. Although it's a little bit more um, than the, the diameter of the tool, it's not really that much more. So two passes is probably more than enough. Now, the width of the cut, this is, I guess, for more specialised um, cutting where we can uh, step the cut in and out to get a cleaner finish. For most cuts, um, it's probably unnecessary. Um, and really, it's something that you only want to start experimenting with after you've um, had a, a few cuts and understand the machine and, and the process reasonably well. Now, the feeds and speeds, this is very important. So you need to pay attention here. Now, the feed rate is important. That's how fast um, the spindle moves through the material. So this is the, the speed with which um, it is cutting. So you can ask uh, the workshop technicians for advice as to sort of what the, um, added, what the proper um, cut should be. Um, but probably in this instance, we can go for a 3,000 millimetres per minute. So in other words, it's 3 metres per minute that it's travelling. Now, final pass rate, again, let's not worry too much about that now. Um, what that means is that um, if we have um, a finishing cut, then we can adjust the, the speed of that finishing cut to suit. Now, the other uh, important uh, parameter is the plunge rate. Now, this is um, how fast it enters into the material or drops into the material. Now, typically, this is uh, much slower than the feed rate. Um, and in this instance, again, we're using the 8mm rougher, which is a fairly resilient tool. So we'll use a value of 1,000 millimetres a minute. So 
it's something that you can, uh, as I said, ask the technicians about. Uh, there will be some uh, ready reckoners or um, advice uh, on the Blackboard site that can give you some guidance to adequate feed and plunge rates according to the tooling. But if in doubt at all, just ask someone. Again, the dwell is something that we don't have to worry too much. And the spindle speed is something we can adjust. Now, I'm not going to bother too much about this, but um, the, there is a sort of variance between, say, 18,000 RPM and 24,000 RPM um, according to the different materials and the different types of tooling that you use. Now, because we're just using um, simple plywood and we're using the rougher, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going to put anything in there. Now, if I leave that blank, what will happen is the uh, machine will just default to the fastest uh, spindle speed, which in this case is 24,000 RPM. Now, the direction um, is something um, you maybe need to pay attention to. For most materials, woods and so on, you will use a conventional um, uh, processing of, of the job, which means that the router bit um, is designed to eat into the material, and so it's the most efficient way of cutting. You would use a climb um, only if you're cutting sort of non-ferrous metal such as aluminium or plastics. Now, this affects the way that the swarf or the waste um, material is um, ejected um, from the spindle and when we have it as a climb mode um, that swarf tends to get ejected away from the shape so if you're cutting plastic or metal um, the hot swarf won't um, bond onto your finished shape which is uh, quite important. Entry and exit parameters um, again, for basic cutting, we don't really need to worry too much about that. But what these settings are for is to sort of um, give different ways that the um, uh, router bit enters into the material to give it a cleaner cut and to preserve the life of the tool. Now, once we've got those um, settings um, established, remember feeds and speeds is the really important one as well as the number of passes and the depth. They're the three that you have to pay most attention to. We'll go OK and we'll get this warning which says please note that the cut depth is deeper than the current plate thickness. Well we know that, we've set it um, to go deeper um, so it cuts through. I guess this alert is just to make sure that you haven't made some big mistakes. So instead of saying 17.3 millimeters that you haven't written 173 millimeters. So it's a, it's a little bit of a cross check. So we'll go OK there. Now we haven't quite done yet so We've got all of the settings for that tool sorted out, but some of the other things that we need to pay attention to are down here. Now typically, um, once we've um, deleted the outside um, shape that defined the material, um, EndRoute will by and large predict whether it's an external or an internal shape. Now if it's an external shape, it will automatically uh, push the route a bit to the outside of the geometry. If it's an internal shape, it will automatically push it to the inside. So we just have to make sure that the correct um, setting there is is checked. The other thing is, as we spoke about in the other videos, is the use of bridges. Now bridges are very important to execute a job safely um, so that shapes don't move while they're being cut. And so, particularly if you're cutting a job with lots of small shapes, that those small shapes don't jam into the spindle or worse still, um, fly off the table. So, we will always um, click that. Now, what you'll find is it will open up a series of other um, options here. Now, the bridge type, you'll get several options from a simple lift um, all the way to a smooth messer. Now, these two, uh, the ramped and the smooth mesa, are the ones that um, we use a lot, simply because it's the faster way of cutting, so whereas the lift, it will tend to stop the travel of the um, route a bit. When we do a mesa, it kind of adds just like a little speed bump, so overall it speeds up the job. So we're going to select the smooth mesa,
Now, because the Smooth Mesa is a ramped um, bridge, we do tend to have to give it a bit of extra length. So in this instance, I'm going to give it a length of 15 millimeters and an overall height of 4 millimeters. Now, you don't want to um, give the height of the bridge um, to be the overall thickness of your material. Otherwise, it's going to take you all day um, to sand the bridges off at the end. You don't want to make them too small either. So somewhere a value be somewhere between 4 to 6 millimeters um, is more than adequate. Now, your last option is how it places the bridges. Now, you can place it um, automatically by number. So what will happen then is that um, Androut will just um, divide the, the total travel into the number of bridges and randomly place the bridges according to that algorithm. Now, as we know, we do want to place the bridges a little bit strategically, so it saves us um, hassle when we sand it off, so that we don't put bridges where they're going to be very visible, because there will be um, some visibility of, of the deformation in the plywood even after we sanded it off. So we want to put it somewhere where it's going to be a bit discreet, and also somewhere that it's going to be easy to sand off. So in order to, to have precision where you place the bridges, it's important that you check the manual. Now once we go OK, what you'll see is that you get this little bridge icon. Then what you do is you go around and you simply locate your bridges where you want them. So I'm going to click one there, one there, one there, and one there. Now, as we discussed in, in other instructionals, we know that these edges here are going to be exposed, so we should avoid putting bridges, and we want to put them on an outside face so that we can put um, a, a sander onto that. So once we're happy with that, we hit the Escape key, and that finishes off the routine. Now, if we zoom in, you'll see that the router offset has already has automatically pushed it to the outside and it's a good check um, just to make doubly sure that we've got that correct. Okay, so here we are back again. Now we've set up the uh, cutting um, parameters for this first shape. Now we want to, uh, I guess, repeat that strategy for these next one, two, three shapes. Now what I'm going to do, having gone through all of the effort to set up this routine, you'll be thankful to know that what we can do is uh, just reuse or repeat those settings. So I've just selected these uh, three shapes. I've held the shift key down so I can do multiple selections. I'm going to go back here to my routing offset. You'll see my 8mm roughers already set up. We can double check that. We're going through two passes, the feed rate and plunge rate, three and one, all good. Double check that it's uh, external and that um, we're using bridges. So we go OK. And again, we can just then place our bridges. Remember to put them somewhere that's going to create the least problem, somewhere where we can sand them off easily, and also somewhere perhaps that they're not going to be quite so visible in the final object after we assemble it. So they're all done. All good.